nice to have you here hi sanasi so the first question to you right away is could you tell me a bit about why is smart engagement important and how does it help i just borrow a line from what you just said engaged employees stay for what they can give disengaged employees can rather they just look out for what they can get right uh, if i make quote a gallup survey it said that over 60% of employees in the us when they had so when they had surveyed people were on the verge of being disengaged don't quote me on that but uh, as an as a statistic it is very interesting to see that not a lot of organizations have employees who are very engaged who are very aligned with what the company is trying to do or who get a lot of fulfillment from what they are doing so in the same survey in the results of the survey there was also some correlation between how engaged an employee was and uh, how likely they were to find their work satisfying how likely they were to be happy with what they were doing and a similar other metrics so in some sense engagement is that elusive um target is that the right word for it engagement is something elusive something that you can't quite put the finger on put your finger on and it really affects how an organization does not in the not just in the short term but also in the long long run Uh, affects how employees are engaged with the brand as with the organization as a whole and what the dynamic is like within the organization itself so for small teams this matters especially because they may or may not have anyone dedicated to uh, focusing on employee engagement right sometimes some uh, ambitious hr folk might take on the duty and you know even do a great job of it but let's face it in most cases they have their hands full with what uh, what what is their charge anyway so this is where uh, someone like someone like ctq can come in and help organizations not only create spaces where employees can uh, find engagement find things to be inspired by but also through various events like games quizzes and other uh, things that we can orchestrate bring people together for memorable experiences now you know pre pandemic world when everyone used to work from the same office well in most cases anyway there used to be opportunities for people to just run into each other build bonds build friendships have conversations uh, which are not only about work but in a post pandemic world in in a primarily online workspace a lot of the times that doesn't happen uh, and even if you are in a place where you are co-located with everyone you don't want to leave these chance encounters up to serendipity you have to be a little more deliberate about it and that is what creating all of these spaces is all about being deliberate about making sure that there are these chances for employees there are these chances for the workforce to bond together as a unit because otherwise monotony sets in really quickly and breaking monotony therefore has great value so that's fascinating what you said because one you don't want to leave it to chance and at the other time you can't really aim uh, you can't go in thinking that we are going to do engagement it's something that happens naturally yeah. organically so do you think these games the aim of these games is purely entertainment or do you think that there can be a higher objective you can achieve something else via these games or should they be purely entertainment i wouldn't say uh, they are purely entertainment in the sense that even if you set out with the idea of having a good time set out with the aim of having a good time there are positive spillover effects you know let's say uh, there is something challenging that the group is doing together with a shared sense of purpose it bring it ends up bringing the group closer together as a unit for example we see this a lot in uh, the the training regimen that a lot of the world's armies go through the example of the navy seals is particularly striking in this regard because they go through a very grueling regime i think it's a 3 day uh, training period 3 day uh, for for them to graduate as navy seals where quitting is very easy but getting through is very very difficult to quit they just have to ring a bell three times and they are out and by the time the three days end uh, the number of people who have made it through has gone down drastically but what ends up happening is because they have faced that ordeal together 
uh, they end up growing very close to each other and that that has immense value when they actually go out on a mission in the field so uh, the team cohesion that results as a uh, as a result of the whole training exercise the importance of that is through the roof similarly when there are engagement events that uh, a company is undertaking even with the aim of just having fun many a times because teams are working together because individuals are working together e- j- uh, even if it is just to beat the opponents they develop bonds they build friendships uh, you know they end up being able to communicate in much smoother ways that that wall of awkwardness which is there sometimes between colleagues sometimes between people who don't know each other too well that comes crumbling down so uh naturally all of this comes with a lot of benefits such as smoother communication open exchange of ideas and opportunity for all team members to shine to practice at building strategy leading teams and so on see not only does it create a positive association it has lingering effects that spill over into uh, other spheres as well right? so whether you should use these for higher uh, um objectives i would say absolutely go right ahead games are a great way of helping people pick up skills and without explicitly calling them you know uh, v- spaces where you can up level spaces where you need to learn something because uh, many a times in corporate settings the term learning comes with a lot of connotations of oh i have to complete this course i have to complete this certification and so on and so the bonus here is that people get to actually try these qualities on in a in a fun setting while uh, not being presented while all of this is not being presented uh, presented in a traditional didactic training type of a setting so yeah i definitely say there are higher objectives which can be met and uh, the games that one selects for such events can and should be used for a uh, for gaining that objective it's perfect time to ask you that uh, this is exactly what we aim to do at choose to think is not just uh, orchestrate this to not leave it to chance but also plan and pick games in such a way that uh, whether they serve a higher purpose or not they are in, they are giving you something extra than just the rules or just the game itself so basically how does one choose games that are right for you okay but well, that's a very interesting question and let me let me uh, gather my thoughts here uh, before i give you an answer uh what i'll say is first and foremost no this is where knowing the team comes in handy that information can be very useful because based on the team dynamic and composition for example let's say you have a team which is mostly outgoing uh, likes likes to do things outdoors likes to uh, you know hang out as a group go out on dinners and things like that <clears throat> something like an outdoor game or a picnic might be great and uh, it's not, let's not just limit ourselves to let's to a picnic right uh, you can then pick activities which go well with the picnic which go well with a dinner which go well with something outdoors with something that the team might like to do uh, on the other hand if the team is mostly the kind which enjoys uh being in the company of each other indoors doing something in the office space or doing something within uh like within a closed space within a closed environment maybe something like board games which they really enjoy can be a hit many times trivia nights can be great for such teams as well uh, in fact trivia nights can be great for all kinds of people all kinds of teams but uh, specifically for teams that enjoy something indoors there are a lot of other games that you can choose what you should be wary of is choosing the wrong kind of game for the, for uh, a group because you know you want people to have fun but if the, if there is no wavelength matching as they say then it ends up and it ends up being an hour of uh, just trying to figure out what's going on and people trying to learn the rules and you know at the end of the day nobody goes back thinking oh that was fun i uh, i had a lot of fun and let's do this again so one thing to look out for while picking these games is to look at the gameplay do you want it to be a strategy game do you want it to focus on communication do you want it to be an improv based activity 
all of these things matter uh, because these can subtly influence the outcome that you're gunning for. Uh, now, based on the gameplay, you can then decide whether players join in as individuals or players play as teams. So if players are playing as teams, then the, the kind of activities you pick change. The kind of goals the activity tries to reach change. Again, one more thing to consider is are players playing against each other? Are they competing against their colleagues? Are they competing against other teams to reach one common objective? Or are they cooperating together to beat the game? For example, there are a lot of games where uh, the game is designed in such a way that unless you cooperate with your co-players, you cannot reach the end goal, which is beating the game. So these, can, these such kind of games can be great for, uh, you know, helping teams cooperate without, without uh, explicitly saying, oh, you have to cooperate. Uh, because stumbling across an insight is the best way you can teach someone something. So all of these factors play a big role when picking the activities that are right for you. So to summarize, knowing the team, knowing the gameplay, uh, knowing what kind of activities they enjoy, and also in a sense, knowing what goal it is that you're trying to, serve, what purpose it is that you're trying to serve. This will help you in trying to pick what activity to consider. You have had a lot of experience in dealing with different teams and organizing different kinds of games for those uh, different teams uh, across cultures and across geographies as well. So can you think of a must do? Say, suppose someone is organizing games. Can you think of a must do that they should do during an engagement or a game session? Hmm. What I'll say is whatever game you're choosing, make it extremely clear how it works. Make it make the rules very, very clear so that there is no unambiguity. There is no uh, scope for confusion anywhere. What this does is it enables the players to get started right away. They don't have to spend any of their brain power in thinking, oh, what does this rule mean? What is the interpretation? Is this a valid move for me? Is this the way in which the game can progress? So the, the, uh, the lesser amount of time people spend in doing that, the more time they have for actually playing the game and having fun. Okay, perfect. So now I know that uh, just like Penn and Teller have these this library of magic, you have this library of games that uh, you can draw upon and uh, implement in different teams. So can you share an anecdote where it's about a game or any engagement session that uh, captured how these games pan out? Uh, right off the top of my head, I can think of one incident that happened when we were playing a game in the pre-pandemic uh, era with one of our clients. What we had asked them to do was we had divided them into two teams of six people each. The objective of the game was both of them had the same same kind of material, five sheets of newspaper and a roll of cello tape. Their objective was using the paper and the cello tape to build a bridge-like structure, a freestanding bridge-like structure, uh, which would not collapse and under which a person might be able to crawl. One team started, you know, rolling the paper in a very methodical manner. And just by looking at them, you could, you could tell that they had spent a lot of time thinking of what might be the best shape to go with, and then arrived at this conclusion that a, a, a tube might be the best bet given the material and given the time constraints. So they started making these really beautiful rolls of paper. Uh, and I knew that it was going to be structurally quite sound. On the other hand, we have this other team as soon as uh, the, the bell went off, they just started folding paper in a bid to make something passable, in a bid to make something that could stand up. By the time the first team was done making all of their rolls of tubes, this other team had managed to fold their paper into uh, uh, long, long uh, members for the bridge, let's say, and they had managed to build the bridge. It had collapsed a couple of times. They had managed to fix it again, and they had also managed to get someone to crawl under it. And that led to a very interesting uh, conversation at the end of the activity from their co-founder saying, uh, this is where we want, this is where speed is paramount when you're trying to build prototypes. So it was a nice learning experience for the entire team as a whole. Uh, no doubt the product would have been superior, would have been uh, better, better finished if the first team had built it using their well-constructed tubes. It would have lasted a long time. But the idea was not to build something that lasted in this activity. It was to make sure that whatever was being built 
it served as a proof of concept. So this is where that co-founder's uh, comment about rapid prototyping really stuck with me. And I'm sure it is a lesson that the team also hasn't forgotten. It just also gives you a glimpse into how uh, some of these activities can serve a higher purpose. Just the way we discussed a little while back. That's absolutely fascinating. And as much I would love to know more anecdotes and more games that you have uh, you know, organized for different uh, companies. This is all the time we have today. So thanks for being here.